Magistrate Lin Gongshin. Your father, the, the head of the household right now? Or is um, his father alive? Or is it a matriarch? How do you picture for your family here? We're one of the side branches to the clan. The left hand of the main clan. Perfect. Yeah. Do you have siblings? I have an older sister. But certainly for your family, their hopes have been kind of pinned on you and, and the work that you do? Yeah. Yeah. My father's name is Lin Huo. H-U-O. Father calls you in and he says, we have been granted a great honor. I know that you have many things you must do in the course of your duties as, as a magistrate these days, but if we do well in this, the head of the clan may look more favorably upon us. There is to be a gathering of the leaders of the various branches of our family are meeting with members of the Purity Sword sect. There has been bad will between us for too long. They are coming here to our town to meet and speak on these things. And we are to make sure that things are settled throughout the city and that nothing untoward happens. I must turn to you to handle these matters, my son. What do you think of this? First father. You must take Lucky Dog with you. He will aid you in this, and you must make sure that things are secure in town. There may be those malcontents who have heard of this. It may be coming here to disrupt. There will be an exchange of gifts between the two families, including, I understand, we will be giving up one of the legendary lotus petals, crafted at the beginning, will be given over to the purity sword as a sign. This also may be an excellent opportunity. Perhaps we could coincide your wedding ceremony with this to match the auspicious days. I'm not sure if that is wise, Father, that we would be so presumptuous as to put our private affairs on the same level as something that is so important as a meeting between all these different clans. You are still young. You do not understand the opportunities that I passed by in my youth that I wish I had taken. We must be bold in these things. We must step forward. Will you think on this? At least consider this. Yes. Of course I will. And he will dismiss you, and he's put a whole bunch of responsibility in your hands. Let's come, then, with that in mind, to Wailing Pain. When the camera comes in on you, where do we see you? The last thing mentioned in the previous scene was, like, you should think on this, right, at least. And I think when it agrees, it cuts to me thinking underneath, like, a cherry blossom tree or something, right? D practicing my urhu. You know... That you know, in this household are people that worry you. Your fiance is here. Your sister is here. Lucky dog, who you know, is here. But also, more importantly, Ming has arrived after journeying from the temple, arrived to be greeted by your sister. Something perhaps you did not realize was going on, right? And maybe they're even greeted by. The wailing pain of me up on the hill so that their treachery <laughs> is known, but not really because I didn't see it, but they might and, think that. Well, And that's the thing is your sister called you back here because she's worried. Was she trained like you or was she not trained as an assassin? Oh, interesting. Probably not because okay. otherwise Ming might be suspicious of their evil ways as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, she called you back, and we probably flash back to her conversation with you, and she says, I need you here because I have heard that there will be a great ceremony going on soon with the Purity Sword set coming and possibility for a set of alliances to happen. But I've also heard that there are those who have nefarious intent who do you suspect of these deeds, sister? I do not know. 
but you're the only person I could trust fully besides Ming. You were the only one I could talk to about this. We need not speak of Ming again. I will ferret out the nefarious people that you speak of, I'm sure. And uh, we cut to the crunching of leaves as a figure walks across over to you beneath the cherry blossoms, beneath the tree there. A woman, one of your instructors. What is her name? Ping. We'll call her Auntie Ping. She says, Lei, it has been some time since we have spoken. Indeed. How are you? And I stand up. I am fine. Have you kept up your practice? Could you not hear? That is not what I spoke of. I am as sharp as ever, just as my notes are. Good, good. We made arrangements for you to be put into this household for a reason. And what reason is that? Well, that time has come. There will be a meeting soon. And the leaders of Purity Sword Sect and of your own Petal Blossom Guardians will be present. And we will need you to eliminate one of them. Which one? We will tell you that when the time comes. I see. Well, you can always count on me. Excellent. Then you have no qualms about this? Lives fall like my notes. You have no qualms about doing this perhaps in front of Ming? Ming sees little. You may see more than you think. Not this time. If he becomes a problem? I suppose I will have to deal with that when the time comes. But I think Ming has his own distractions. And uh, she doesn't lean on you. I don't think there's any need to roll for inner conflict there. But that is in the back of your mind. And she will bow and she will return to her duties. We will cut from there to Ming. You have come here involved with Sue. How did that come about? At one point in time, I was involved with Wailing Pain Lay. Actually, it's a good question. How did that come about, considering I've lived a cloistered life in a temple? I'm imagining that you would have gone out with the, the priests from time to time to do things and fell in love at an early age, you know, grabbed those moments of joy where you could behind the backs of the monks. She, outside of the view of her instructors, does that seem reasonable? That works for me if that works for Lei. Oh yeah, there was Meadows involved. <laughs> <laughs> when you met and fell in love with Sue, did you, and I say love, Lucy, you can define how you want it, how your feelings are, but did you know that this was Lei's sister? I think I did, but I think more than just falling in love with Sue after Lei, I feel like I cheated on Lei with Sue. And I didn't realize that was not a thing people did. Having was my first experience with love, probably some of my first experiences with women. There's a lot of things I don't know about the real world outside of the temple and I made a grave error and afterwards broke things off with Lei and tried to hide that from Sue. But my relationship with Sue has basically been the same as it was with Lei, stealing time on supply runs, mm -hmm. probably in the same places that I met with Lei. And we've come to hear now you're in this household, the household that she is part of. You have friends here. You know Gongshin. You respect him. He's engaged to Lei. That's kind of important to you. How do you feel about Lucky Dog? Lucky Dog and I are uh, friends from the road. 
Actually, I don't know. We could ask Lucky Dog. Lucky Dog, uh, what do you think? So I went with that as part of a bonds for player to your left. And on the spreadsheet, that means Ming, which is good because I want some more connection with Ming. But I figured that as like a, a bodyguard, I've probably been on the road guarding people before. And that's a good chance I may have crossed paths with you out there. So maybe we took down some bandits or did some cool thing and mm. earned a mutual respect there. Uh, I like that idea. It's just going to be me and the oldest man in the temple who couldn't really defend himself. So we kind of hired out for a little extra muscle, became friends on the road, and maybe every once in a while we could contact you for help if we felt we needed it. For sure. I like that. I am going to assume, just to take kind of hard frame this in a little bit, that Ming, you, and Lucky Dog are out in the town walking about, talking, maybe some guilt there. And Lucky Dog, you will see in one of the inns. Now, you're not a magistrate. You serve a magistrate. But you've, you've learned some things, right? Yeah, yeah. And as you're walking along, you see, going into one of these taverns, the Seven Ghost Fingers. <sighs> Ming, place it urgent hand on your chest they're looking around suspiciously you see them go drop a tail on the innkeep's stand and he escorts them upstairs and it looks like they're there to meet and discuss they have that air of planning and they're a dangerous gang what do you want to do i mean those are dangerous men those are the seven ghost fingers are there Fingers supernatural in some way? Well, indeed, there are seven of them. They have seven fingers? That's what they say. <sighs> so many wonders outside the temple. So many wonders. They can still be used for evil. So what do you think we should do? Call for backup? We could get the magistrate? I, I, I do not want to, to bother my master, no. No, this is an auspicious day coming up, and we can't have any dastardly figures or fingers, that is, interrupt this wedding and this meeting. I think it would be most beneficial if we could handle this with some subtlety. Some diplomacy, yes. We will talk to them and make them go away. Well, perhaps that is a good method. So how do you want to handle this, then? Dog, is a chance to prove yourself, right? Indeed. <laughs> diplomacy. I am more used to speaking with my arms than with my, my words. But, Ming, you are a very well-spoken individual. Perhaps you could show them the error of their ways. Show them the righteous path. Perhaps with my words I can. And if not, I do have a large stick. <laughs> you have mine as well. And I like to pull out my... Do like a little flourish and stick it back in my pocket. But we have to... Be aware of the fact that a monk is probably going to stand out in a tavern. You don't know the monks where I came from. <laughs> well, if you insist, be careful not to tear your robe. I'll do my best. All right. I guess I'm going to stride in after them and <laughs> try to strike up a conversation. So you can walk up the stairs. You get... That looks, I mean, you, you've let your hair grow out, so you're not the shaven head monk, but you have that robe, that look. You walk up to the second floor. There are seven of them. They are lounging across chairs. They've got their, their food there. They're talking and drinking. They've clearly paid to have this area just for themselves. And you walk up, and you'll see they all kind of turn to look at you. A couple of them finger the pommels of their blades. The person who seems to be the leader will go, I think you have lost your way, little monk. Sir, I am right where I am meant to be. What is your name? You give me your name first. You walked up here into the place that we have reserved, little monk. My name is Ming. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Sedate Rao. Oh. Do you practice a lot of meditation, Rao? I have from time to time when it amuses me. 
and that seems to generate some laughter amongst his crew. What is it you want, monk? I came here to ask the same of you. We are having a meal, relaxing, enjoying the sights. Do you plan only on enjoying the sights for the next few days here? Oh, obviously. Is there any chance I could um, encourage you to move along, perhaps enjoy uh, the sights of the next town over? Are you telling us to leave, little monk? Asking politely. Not telling yet. That's rude. I'm sorry, is it? We are simply sitting here relaxing. He stands up and he says, I see you have a staff with you. Yes. Usually use it for walking. Usually. Then why don't you walk back down those stairs and go back the way you came? Your tongues are nothing but vipers. This is nothing but a nest of demons. I was like kind of standing like just behind Ming's shoulder and it's like... Your villainy will not be endured here. Well, we'll see about that, won't we, dog? Seems to know who you are. Or he just insulted him. Yeah, him and uh, he draws his blade. It looks like he's going to move to engage you, Lucky. And the other six are going to move to engage you there, Ming. This fine city will not suffer the the lowly form of martial arts that the seven ghostly fingers practice. I will fight you as you wish, but not within these boundaries. I don't think you have a choice, servant. I'm going to come back to Magistrate Lin. How are you doing? Your father has put the responsibility for keeping order in the town while all this is going on on your shoulders. So what would be your first task? Who is giving the gift? There is a senior member of your clan. A woman has arrived recently who you weren't sure why she had come, but she's clearly the one who has that gift and will be handing it off. And if you want, you can speak with her. The things that I would do is go talk to her first and then go and talk to the heads of the leaders who are going to be meeting. Okay kind of young, and this is a senior person. Her name is Coral Lantern. She's a senior member of your clan. She's been given an honored a space here in the household. You will see that when you arrive, she has a handmaid with her who you will recognize has the outfit of the academy that Wailing Payne comes from, your fiancé. And she seems to be the servant to to Coral Garden. And she kind of sits off to the side when you come in. Coral Garden welcomes you. Ah, you you are uh, Gong Shin. Yes, that is me. Well met, madam. Your father highly of you. Thank you. It is my honor to finally make an acquaintance of you. I have heard many things about what you have done for this clan. And I would like to pay my respect. Tastes appreciated. These stories get larger with the tellings. My own work is modest. I'm sure that there is more than a bit of truth in them. As you know, I'm sure already, I have been tasked with uh, making sure that this meeting between the clans is going to go over smoothly. And I would just like to come and make myself known if you find any issues or if there's anything about accommodations that you would like changed, please let me know. I am glad that you came to me. There is something. Yes, of course. I have traveled here with the gift that we are to present. It is a petal from the first lotus. I wish to put it into the hands of someone that I can trust to keep it safe. Would you be willing to guard this? Is there... A possible threat you think is targeting you by any chance? The pedal is not safe in your hands. She pauses and she kind of hesitates there. Do you want to kind of press to maybe get some idea of what's going on? Do you want to try and read the scene maybe? Or do you want to just... Okay. Yeah, I would like to do that. 
Uh, so that's a study action. So let's go to that move. You get to pick what chi would like to roll with. Awareness, right? So that would sure, have to be yeah, water. You could agree with that. Yeah. Why don't you roll with water then? The water is zero, so it should be. doesn't make a difference. Oh, and I rolled a 10. I'm going to give you some basic info, and then you can look at the options that are on the study. You can tell that she knows that there is some threat that she doesn't want to speak about. That demonstrates that she is nervous about something specific. So that's the basic info, and you've got two hold to spend on that. Okay. Well, I would like to find out how I can get her to tell me. Uh, she clearly wants to trust you. And so if you follow up on that with due politeness, you have the sense that she will be willing to, to tell you. Madam Coral Lantern, I understand that I am very young and that one could have reservations in sharing their concerns with me. But I assure you that I want this to go over well more than anyone else. And that if you have any concerns about a threat to this meeting, then we should know. And I, of course, will promise you that I will put my all to handling it. And if I can't handle it, I will also, with your permission, of course, take it to my father as well, who has more pull. But it is, of course, up to you. I've heard good things about you. So I ask that you be careful in with what I'm about to tell you. I have heard that there is an agent who wishes ill at this meeting who belongs to our family, who is associated with us, either directly or through some close tie. Beyond that, I do not know. I know we must be wary. I see. And you have one other hold. Do you want to spend that yeah. now or do you want to hang on to that? I kind of want to find out about her attendant, actually. Would that okay. be possible? What do you want to know? What's your question? I think I'm curious because if she's from the same academy as Lei, mm -hmm. then I would assume that she doesn't know any martial arts. But if one is to be the attendant of Coral Lantern, then that means they are very strong. <laughs> yes. So... It's not, it doesn't make sense to me. And I want to know what's going on with that. <laughs> so I want to know why she's here and ah. what is her purpose. It is weird to you, but you know that there are different kinds of paths of training, but it does seem odd. And this woman definitely has the feel of someone who's trained. And you're a magistrate. You see through those layers. And she has the feeling of someone who's trained and perhaps keeps that quiet. So there's definitely an odd feeling here to you. Okay. Does that seem like a fair answer? Yeah. Well, I noticed that she is trained because when she walks, she doesn't make a sound at all. And that's clearly someone who knows light-footed things. I don't know what it's called in English. <laughs> uh, Lightfoot or lightness, I've seen it translated as. Oh, okay. Yeah. So curious. I'm going to flag that, but not okay. say anything. Well, I'm going to cut away from you then after that information, and we're going to come back to Wailing Pain. Matters of the heart. There's matters of the murder. What is it that you want to be up to? Uh, what do I need to do mechanically to engage with my entanglements to get the sweet, sweet XPs? Kind of go and face them. Go and talk with Ming. Go and talk with Sue or, or someone else that's tied up in that closely. How much do you resent your sister? How much do you love <laughs> Ming? So I'm looking to resolve them, or... You can, yeah. One of the things about this that's different from a, a lot of the sort of PBTA games is we can actually deal with entanglements and change them and rewrite them or resolve them or just engage with them. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to go to Sue and make sure that the debt is sealed and counted for. Where do you find Sue, then? Perhaps I invite her to a tea house. She will come and meet with you. She's not nearly as highly placed as some of the others. You have a very good position. The Academy has looked out for you. She has done not as well. And quite frankly, she's sort of 
tied romantically to a monk, that's not going to do well for her future prospects and lifestyle. So when she arrives, of course, she's a little bit in awe because you're the sister who is more polished, more trained, more skillful, wealthier. Sister, just have a chance to speak with you again. Have you found anything out? No, I have not found anything out, but I wanted to, and I like pour some tea for her. I wanted to make sure that you and I were on the same page, Sue, that the debt that I honored you, this is why I came. This is the only reason I would come to this place. And I'm like trying to skirt the issue of of Ming as I usually do when talking with her. <laughs> and she goes, I, what do you mean? I mean, I, 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 I need you to stay and help and make sure that nothing bad happens. And that will clear my debt with you. Yes, sister. We're family. It, I mean, it's not so much a debt as, as, as a bond, right? Indeed. But this, I think you can agree, goes beyond our bond, yes? That may be, but I wish you would stay. I'm hoping that perhaps before you depart, you might see Ming and I wed. Can I have you roll inner sure. conflict? <laughs> what do you will- want to roll with? Probably metal, control, solidity, reflection, probably more the control part. So as to not blemish my sister's wedding plans with me telling her that her husband's a douche. No, just kidding. Um, (laughs) That's a double one. So you don't keep yourself together. What happens? Maybe I tell her... And not, I don't think I say Ming's name, but I say that I, I do the cartoon tiger. Let me tell you a story of two people that are definitely people in this movie (laughs) and say that before I became a wanderer when I was quite young. So I guess like four years ago, because I'm 22 or something, right? Uh Maybe six years ago. And it's at that point that A, you mark Chi, which would be middle. It's at that point that uh, Magistrate Lin arrives. Why did he mark Chi? Oh, uh, so he d- rolled a two. That's a fail. So as part of the GM hard move, I had him mark it. I'm going to come back to that, to you beginning to tell this story to your sister when your fiancé arrives. I want to cut over to our two people in the, the top floor of this uh, tavern. Let's start with uh, you, lucky dog. Sedate Rao. Kind of goes, he's got his sword out. It's a very laconic style as he moves in on you. What do you want to do? So I have a particular idea for how I want this like fight scene to go. Okay. I want to try to like herd them out of town while also looking as inconspicuous as possible. Ooh, interesting. So like I'm deflecting blows like controlling movement and like covering up a lot with like robes and things like that it's like if someone walked by it looked like we were giving a handshake or something like that (laughs) absolutely Uh, you know if you roll well that's part of the fiction that you can absolutely describe okay cool right now these mooks that are fighting your monk friend are below his scale he'll be able to deal with them but this sedate rao he is on your scale So what is your style element? My style element is water. That seems to be in alignment with what I'm attempting to do here. Perfect. So if your foe is your scale, roll with your style element. We see what happens. Five plus water is seven. On a seven to nine, you can win at a cost. You can lose, but you get to mark XP. Or you can deadlock with them and you get to reveal something about them. Mm, I think I'll do the deadlock. Okay. Wow. So what happens that that the two of you describe to me how how it is that this guy sort of counters what you're doing and you lock up with them? Yeah. So like I said, we're we're going around town. There's like a scene where there's a guy like at a dumpling cart or something, and he kind of looks at us, and we're just like, what looks to be a handshake, but really like he has his arm around my weapon. The fl- and- flip around, and uh, you're looking at the wares together, like you don't want to make too much noise. Right. I think what I want to learn about them is like someone that they respect 
who they don't want to be seen fighting in front of. Because I think what's going to happen is we come to some part of town and then there's this person and I sense that he doesn't want to fight in front of them and then we're able to like disperse. Ah, okay. So you will learn they're here, but they kind of kept quiet because Boss Fong runs the streets and this guy would rather not get caught out by Boss Fong. Sedate Rao is kind of looking around and keeping an eye on things, doesn't want to get spotted. So you will kind of pick up on that. So I'm going to cut from that over to our monk, Ming. These seven, now six, ghost fingers come at you. Describe to me how Ming deals with a gang of mooks. Well, Ming's style is primarily defensive. So I feel like he's probably going to try to get in the middle of them and then just avoid their blows so that they wind up striking each other. He'll bend over backwards or hop up on his stick dodge them and send them tumbling just without actually engaging much with them let them beat themselves and each other up that would be what he attempts that seems perfect so you will roll with your style element cool uh seven no no wait oh six okay so you have a choice their numbers can overwhelm you which means you get to mark xp you have to retreat Or you can win, but you have to pay a cost. What kind of cost? The easiest cost would be for you to mark your style element, to mark your chi there. Mm -hmm. Or we could talk about embarrassment. What would you think? I'm going to go for the XP, I think. So what does it look like? How do they overwhelm you? I imagine he's doing his, like, trying to dodge them maneuvers, sticks his staff down and hops up one hand planted on the top of it and then one of them kicks the staff out from under him and he goes down hard and then they just jump on him in the end there's just too many of them and his acrobatics just can't keep up perfect so you kind of have to leap out that second floor hit the street so right now you're in the street kind of getting away from them. You mark XP. Uh, we see that down the street, your compatriot Lucky Dog is locked up with Sedate Rao. I'm going to cut from that over to Magistrate Lin. I'm going to frame you into this scene, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. You have been heading into town. You're going to talk to some of the other heads of the house. You're also looking for Lucky Dog because he's your bodyguard, assistant, But as you were walking along, passing by the tea house, you happened to see your fiancé and her sister. Let me ask you this, then. If you go in to speak with them, would you be more cautious so that you don't interrupt and so you might overhear? Or I am a respectable and polite man, so I will just going to come closer to see if they're in conversation that they don't want others to be a part of first. And I also haven't seen Lei since we first got engaged. Like, we don't know each other very well at all. I just, I've seen her once and I know that she's very beautiful and that's it. (laughs) And she seems like she doesn't know any martial arts from what I know. I don't know anything. Maybe I'm a little awkward as well. I'm like, oh. That that seems perfect to me. So, with that in mind, the story is obviously me, but I'm using other people's names. Like, once there was a woman at the Blossoming Grace School who, at a young age, ventured out on tasks and met a monk, and they fell in love, but it was not meant to be, and spurned the young woman left. And I think, like, as I, part of me, like, losing my, my shit a little bit was, like, maybe at the end of it, just so Sue gets the hint, <laughs> my hand tightens around the cup so much that it does the breaking thing it shatters beneath my touch and your sister's eyes have gotten wider and wider and wider and then you hear her go magistrate lynn at the very end of that and someone calls for me i I have my hands behind my back the way that everyone seems to do and then i like startle a little bit as well and then after a beat i take out my fan and i open it (laughs) this play and uh miss sue uh, magistrate uh, uh my sister has made a, a a mess apologies i will get you a cup as well and i like flag 
a servant or whatever. Comes <laughs> over, puts another cup down. They're wiping the table. Sue says, oh, you've injured your hand. As a wrap, like a piece of cloth or a napkin or whatever's I'm on the table. I'm offering right? my handkerchief. Yeah, I'll take that and wrap it. I want to put some pressure on Sue saying that the story I told is very sad, but it is also just between us and should not be repeated. Right, Sue? You want to do hearts and minds on your sister? Yes. <laughs> okay. What are you rolling with? Condescending seems pretty on point. <laughs> okay. So earth plus zero. I got it's, an eight. Okay. She's upset, but she does nod during this conversation. Let me ask you, Magistrate Lynn, what do you think you picked up from that? What are you feeling about that? Well, as someone who has passed the Imperial exam, I am pretty smart. And I think I definitely got everything that I needed to know from that story. And I have some mixed feelings, which I think I should roll for. Inner conflict. Yeah. I was already having suspicious thoughts about my fiance and, well... There seems to be lots of things that I don't know. I'm going to roll with, I think this is stability. That makes sense. So I'm going to roll with Earth. Okay. So that's a seven. Okay. You have a choice. You can retreat. Essentially, you excuse yourself. You flee the scene. Or you can mark Earth because that's who you rolled with. I'm leaving. (laughs) Okay. So I, I... I take the tea, don't actually drink it, but I make the gesture and then I put it down and I say, thank you. This is very lovely. And then I I just turn and I like walk very fast away. My hands behind my back. And you will walk out to see your bodyguard shopping with one of the seven ghost fingers, this villain sedate Rao looking at these scarves. I walk over and I look with them at the scarves. Rao, his eyes are locked on yours. Your eyes are locked on his lucky. And then you'll hear the... <clears throat> is that mm-hmm, from... That is from the magistrate who's just stepped over. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Magistrate Lin. Uh, we were just uh, looking at these silks. Aren't they a lovely shade of red? And they seem to be kind of wrestling. And that's probably the moment at which you hear the crash... And you see Ming come flying out of the second floor of the tavern and land on the the street below. And you'll see these figures with swords out come running up and look like they're maybe going to to leap after him. Okay. I'm going to walk over quickly to where maybe I'll just like do the flying over to where Ming is. Because, well, Lucky Dog seems to have his part of the conflict under control if there's a conflict. Or maybe right. they're looking at silks. <laughs> Perfect. You can land over there. Magistrate. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, it's good to see you. How are you doing? Is it now? Are there other fingers flying from the building? The six that are up there were about to leap down to follow up on him. Mm-hmm. But of course, they've seen a magistrate walk in. Yeah. Now they're a little like, mm, kind of looking at sedate Rao And they're trying to figure out what to do. Oh, they're looking at him. So he's the leader. Yes. I give all of them a look. Like, I've seen you. And then I turn back to this this jolly pair in front of the stall. Sedate. Wow. Do I know him? Well, they seem to be like a local group of thugs, right? They're not like... They're out-of-towners, actually. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to go up to him. I think that... uh... Now you see, like, his hand is, like, in a barrel because he he had pulled his sword out and I'd, like, stuck it in there. So it looks like he's maybe reaching for some fish out of this barrel or something like that. They've continued on with this sort of close-in, tight, fight-not-fight the entire time you've been there. Can I hit their pressure points so that they stop moving? Rao is a foe of your scale, so you could certainly try and, and deal with him if you want. Maybe I shouldn't. Of course, that you do that, right? Uh, your bodyguard is already fighting him. You could embarrass him. And I don't want there to be a fight. Maybe I won't. You could you could <sighs> just try and talk them down. Sedate Rao, I see you're enjoying our shops here in our humble town. There's lovely. 
Good inventory. Mm, well displayed. Very clean. Well, I don't know if you know, but we have some important things coming up, and I would prefer it if you were to not cause any trouble. Let's have you roll Strive for Mastery. I think that would probably be Earth as well, because that's Presence. Okay. Well, as long as you don't have Earth marked. I don't. Okay. Ten. What option don't you want them to pick? I do not want them to attack haphazard. So Sedate Rao looks and he makes the nod to you, lucky dog of, I'll let go if you let go. <laughs> There's a couple of fakes, like, a, and then we finally separate. You will come out onto the street to see this. You see Ming. You see this fighting tableau going on. What's your reaction to this? I think I like rushed out here after Magistrate Lynn because I <laughs> realized that something must be amiss. One sip and then gone. That never happens. I think I might be just sort of looking with sort of pleading eyes to the Magistrate. <laughs> looking at him and then you see Ming. Ming, what's your reaction when you see come out of this tea house with Sue? Uh, mild terror. I'm far more afraid of that than of the six dudes who were just beating me up. And Sedate Rao takes advantage of this sort of mutual glance paralysis that you're all involved with. And he'll back out and he does that. <laughs> shouts for his men and they will take off down the street. Camera will kind of do that zoom around pan showing all four of you in the same place, looking at each other, glances cutting back and forth. <laughs>